Chapter 5. Effective, creating effective partnerships, family, school, and community. This is one of my more favorite uh, chapters because they do a nice job. Dr. Rojas covers a lot of things here. And let me just take you through the um, where we're going. Here is the outline of the chapter. First, we'll talk about uh, collaboration roles of the different stakeholders, like the principal and the teacher and the parents. And then I'm going to just give you all this, all these activities. I might make you, I think I'll have you do just pick out a couple of them, but I'm going to give you this on a slide uh, to put on your website. And then parents as volunteers too here. I'm going to clip a whole bunch of stuff here, create a whole bunch of things. And I want you to do something separate with it. I, not, I want some of this in your notes, but more so I want you to create a link on your web page under this chapter five. And under that link, put parents as volunteers and then clip a bunch of stuff, uh, add a bunch of stuff under there. And it's a reminder for you in the future, uh, someday, uh, whether it's when you're first teaching or you've been teaching 10 years and you're kind of stuck on how to work with parents, you'll come back and uh, revisit some of these things and it'll jog your memory, especially these things. So I will cue you what I want under that link as uh, parents as volunteers under chapter five. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. I'm gonna come back here for a second and talk about this, the outcomes, the meaning of family collabor school collaboration, identify how to create family school collaborations and the roles, and then school activities. I showed you that list and then how to create those pathways, how to work with families. And again, I, I think they do a pretty decent job here on this. So first of all, the school climate is, uh, you know, environments, relations, communications, interactions, comfort level, nutrients and nutrients, attitudes, all those and things you know uh, I learned this uh, more as a professor going to schools to do observations. You could just feel uh, that climate sometimes, whether it was a welcoming one. And it's been harder. We've really, uh, you don't remember this, but it, we've really changed this in our schools uh, from a, 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 an open school to now almost all schools are completely secured, uh, so so they think. Uh, here, I'll give you an example. In our older buildings, almost exclusively, the principal's office was always in the center of the building, the exact center, and it was kind of the heartbeat of the school. Now, especially uh, in Sioux Falls, they've remodeled the schools and moved those away from the centers out to the door so that people coming in and out to have to pass by or pass through the office even. And it's probably a good thing. But to me, it changed the climate. It changed that welcoming climate. And there's nothing that can be done about it. Just the way it is. So what about these attitudes that kind of be, contribute to this? Um, school climate has a positive effect on children's learning. Therefore, the majority of the schools Look for ways to promote this. Like here, when children first attend school, they feel apprehension and fear. Administrators and teachers make those take those feelings and account and create environments that's safe. And uh, when you started school, uh, when my kids started school, that a little bit of apprehension. Now, uh, at least my kids have been preschooled to death, so that uh, initial uh, going into kindergarten, first grade, wasn't near as scary as it would have been like in my day. And I had older siblings that kind of paved the way, so I kind of knew what to expect. The thing it doesn't take into account here is somebody that's new to a school. And this is where Dr. Rojas is uh, coming from because uh, a lot of our uh, families that are uh, English are new to this country. This is all new, even from, uh, and they move more often than others. And she doesn't go there, but that's really what this is about, is how to make it a welcoming for new kids that continually move. Uh, like this, when teachers value and respect administrators, they feel motivated about teaching. And so she, she hits that pretty good. Um, 
going to get up to this. And family uh, attitudes contribute to school climate. So uh, in some districts, the burden of poverty consume the parents. And that's what you don't understand for the most part. Uh, a lot of our teachers, you and me, come from middle class homes. And we don't understand this culture. And I don't think we do a good enough job addressing it with you as pre-service teachers. And as I say, Dr. Rojas here, she makes reference to it. But she really doesn't do a nice job in her textbook exclusively working with kids that come from uh that come from um uh, uh generational poverty and so i i think that's an error when i write my book i'm going to do at least a chapter on that uh it talks about the importance of uh, parents involvement and i got a real dose of that uh that all the years my kids were in elementary we served every single year as room parents in at least one of their rooms, if not both, and we got so we really enjoyed it. We had all kinds of games that we knew how to play. Uh, we would organize it in a small private Christian school like where our kids went. Um, teachers were willing to step aside and we ran the snacks and the games and took pictures and organized the whole thing. It was a lot of fun and uh, I think was a benefit to our children. Uh, importance of parents' involvement and education recognized in many years. Uh, you know, we were different than some our, our skill sets. This is very interesting here. Um, parents respond to schools based on their experience. And so I'm going to uh, clip this. And I want you to put this on your website under that link I talk about because I, I want you to have this uh, also And let me just do this with you. Uh, the first one, parents avoid schools like the plague. Uh, and, and this is all based on their experience uh, or their current situation. How about parents who encourage to come to school or parents who readily respond when invited to school or parents who are comfortable and enjoy involvement in school, parents who enjoy power and they are overly active. And I'm, I want to believe this was us, my wife and I, uh, we like to be in there. We like being involved with our kids. And as you can imagine, uh, in our middle class, our kids weren't always real excited about it, especially as they got older. Not real excited to have mom and dad there continually. But uh, the difference between a small school uh, and, and our youngest, uh, Jackson, went to public school his last couple years of elementary. So they went from a school uh, of 100 kids to a school with about 600 in it. So we were, had classes that uh, some of their classes were less than 10 uh, to classes that were always at capacity, multiple sections of each grade. And oh, what a world of difference they were that was in those schools as far as this feeling of welcoming. And I know it's, a, I think, a lot bigger challenge for our bigger schools than our smaller schools. But you take this and uh, put it uh, on your website. So I'm going to uh, start with that here. And here's where it is. Um, first of all, number one is you're going to uh, address uh, each of these from the text and then uh, put on a website, I'm gonna say. Okay, so that's number one. And like I say, I will just see this in in your um, in your website family school collaboration and the roles of the different stakeholders so who are the stakeholders first of all who are the stakeholders well yes it's you, the parents you the teachers and the administrators it's the other personnel in the school so here, consider the following letters. Welcome to the new school year. We're excited that your child will be coming to our school. We warmly ask you to drop him or her off at the, quietly and leave the building. Teachers do not have time to speak with you since they are preparing for their instructional time. Remember that parking in the parking lots is only for teachers. Parents can find parking on the street. We hope that everyone has a great school year. Now are this, welcome to Mustangs. We're starting a new school year. We're happy to see everyone back and welcome to our new children and families. Uh, you you look at these vignettes and talk about it, but 
before you dismiss this as harsh, part of that's true. And again, especially in a building, if there's 600 kids, parking is always an issue. And I have this one example, a school I used to uh, supervise student teachers in. There was no on-site parking. Uh, the teachers and everybody parked in the street. So when I would come to supervise, it would not unusual to park many, many blocks away. And it was one of the things that was a huge barrier as far as um, feeling welcome there. And you had to be buzzed in, uh, which is not uncommon, but you'd walk a long ways, and especially in cold, you'd have to be buzzed in. And uh, that school is closed now. They opened a new school, I'm sure, is more welcoming. Uh, but uh, this is an issue of how they're welcome. And I, to me, this is the difference between uh, we had some of this, a large school that it was very, very hard to get to teachers. It was under lock and key. The building was humongous. It was a long walk down to the build, down to the end where my, where my son was. Um, and our smaller school was much more like this, that everything was open. We knew all the teachers, we knew all the administrators, knew everybody in the building by first and last name um, in the bigger school. And again, I'm not faulting a bigger school. I'm just saying it's a difference. And you, uh, several of you will be teachers in a big school. Be aware of that, of that feeling, of what that feels like. So family school collaboration brings strengths of the home and expertise to the center of school into a working partnership. So that's what it is. An excellent image here. School support systems for schools with child development centers recognize the importance of partnerships with families. And, and part of this, especially in our low-income schools, it's a, a symbolized to the children, to the learners, the importance of school that the parents are there. Now, um, there, there's some limitations here. So what is the leader of the role of this? Uh, the school climate or ecology, uh, the atmosphere of the school center reflects the principles uh, or director's leadership, because not not all, why that's here is uh, some of the things we have, we, they may not be known as the principal, uh, but ne nonetheless a director or something. So here, here's those things, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, give you this here as number two, and you are going to address those things from here, um, and why that matters. And then the, the teacher's role in family engagement. Um, and that's going to be here. This will be number three as you put a sentence for each of those. Okay. Teacher's attitudes and feelings, roles of parents. Uh, I, I'm going to just let you look at these here. And again, um, Dr. Rojas is suggesting, uh, you know, this, um, you need to check your racist attitude at the door. And I, I'm not sure, uh, I, I don't like the assumption that's implied here, but you look through this and see if it does apply to you and see what that, what goes there. And then possible roles of these parents in school um, comes here. Uh, so this will be number four. And you'll address each of these from this page. And I'm going to um, put this one in also here. This is 5-3. I'm just learning this. I can do this. Okay, and that'll be a reminder. So you put this in your notes and on your website. So I'm going to come here and say this also uh, on web, figure 5.3. So I'd like this in your notes and web, your website. Not this, the figure. This figure here I just downloaded. Okay. And here's those possible roles. Uh, as a room parent, um, let's see here. As a room parent, increasing parents, parents uh, to help make policies, collaborative decision making, all those come, uh, come here. All right. 
and ways to enhance that home center thing. Um, center school atmosphere, center is a resource, contact really in the school year, uh, meeting the needs of the school. And again, I'm going to say this is number five. And you put a sentence for each of these, uh, including open door policy, advisory council. Let me show you those. Um, and I don't know if you need this here, figure five, uh, four. How should I like to be involved with classroom volunteer? Let's do this also. I'm just going to save this. Um, 5.4. And let's put that on your website also. And I'll put that there. Point four on web. So I think that's up to three that we have already for your website. And again, I want you to look in this. Your textbook will go away. Hopefully your uh, website never will under this. Okay. It's just a little questionnaire that you may use. And, and again, it's not a website you use. It may help you create your own uh, to work with parents. And what is an open door policy? It really is this attitude. Uh, it goes back to that letter we wrote. What, what is the, the attitude of the school? Uh, how comfortable would you be with uh, parents or community in your class, in your school? And why I think I cringe a little bit this because we've made security so tight uh, I'm not sure how comfortable it is anymore. So I'm challenging you as our future teachers to, to work with this and see what you can do. No bizarre policy is welcoming as an attitude of the school, a series of activities, although periodic open houses, forums, coffee hours, interactive seminars add to that climate. What Are you comfortable with people dropping in? Uh, you obviously don't want it to disrupt instruction and teaching. Uh, but are you comfortable with parents around? And I found in our bigger school, it was very, 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 very hard to get a minute with the teacher. And in our smaller school, uh, it seemed like it was a uh, teacher was were always available. But uh, just something for you to be aware of. What is that open door policy? And again, you are addressing it right here. Okay, and then parents as site-based. This was a new thing when I was still teaching in the middle school is a site-based management uh, council. And so I want you to address that right here. What is this site-based management council? And it's a series of parents that help make decisions or certainly give advice. Uh, I never felt that I uh, had any uh, vote in anything, but you, you got to be heard. And then the strategy for supporting and involving culturally and linguistic diverse families. And again, uh, this is uh, Dr. Rojas's thing. And so um, uh, I, I have it here for you already. Involvement, uh, engagement, empowerment. Uh, that comes right out of here, what those examples are. And so you want to take a look at that. Uh, a strong home school connection is crucial uh, to success. And, and the problem with that statement, uh, that is very, very true. But if you have a, f a home, if you're working with a family that's in crisis in some way, what happens to those kids? What if these things aren't happening? If your fa the family isn't strong enough? And if you work in a culturally linguistic diverse uh, school, that will be an issue. So you'll be challenged more. And that's where it's really critical to have great leaders in the school and the administrators to, to facilitate some of this. Because you won't have time to do all this. If I haven't said it before, I'll say it now. And I want you to write it here. Um, uh, this. Time is always a factor and I want you to make that big and mark it big and red so it sticks out because that will be one of the challenges of you as a teacher is time will always be a factor running out of time time to do all the things so all the things I'm describing here in this chapter will be huge time consumers 
So it'd be great to work in collaboration. That would be one of the things with your bigger schools. You would have four or five uh, other teachers teaching same grade level or teaching uh, special ed with you or whatever, and you collaborate to make these things happen versus a real small school, you may be the lone wolf, uh, the lone person teaching a certain grade or special ed, and uh, you get to come up with some of these on your own. So um, there's those also. Okay, this is the school activities. And what I'm going to do with this, here, here's the family rooms also that uh, come here. Uh, homeschool continuity uh, is this one. And I better write these also. You you tell what these are. Family rooms, f f f f continuities. So this was five. This is uh, This is number six here, making sure you get this on. And this will be number seven. You talk a little bit what those two things are and what it has to do with uh, this group here. Okay. So here's these activities. And I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you this slide as a resource and I'm going to ask you to not put it in your notes, but to put it on your website under Parent Volunteers. Again, as a reminder of all the possibilities of uh, school activities that you can do with parents and children. Okay, so let's, uh, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do instead. I'm going to, um, uh, let's see, where are we at here? I'm going to ask you to, uh, this will be number eight, and that's pick four. Pick four off this list that you think would uh, be something that you know something about or would be able to use. So from those four, let's go back to the text and look at like a back to school night or shared reading. And, and it's a really inclusive group here. Parent education groups, parent networks, homeschool activity packets. So you will find four that you think... Uh, um, are good like conferences uh you know that that doesn't mean parent conferences but you read these maybe you start this pairs carnivals exchanges books or toy donations uh caring cards exchange uh, some wonderful things and maybe this is how you help get the parent group going you share this with them and you become that coordinator a telephone tutor the internet uh, resource rooms, articles on teaching games, libraries, uh, all of these different things. Um, and then jumps to here, what are some summer vacation activities? Uh, jumps over here. Book publishing. Uh, some really cool stuff here. And so, uh, again, that's why I want you to have this list going forward. So you have this to reflect on sometime. Hey, what can we do to get the parent group going in our school? What can we do to really encourage the school climb and create a great environment in our school? Here's a great list. Okay, and these welcome families before the start of school. And that's going to be part of your project letter in August, block walks, uh, bus trips, picnics. Uh, I, I put that all in there. And I'm going to come back to this for, for your project. Uh, on here uh, assisting family special needs uh, I say very very inclusive uh, list here and advocacy uh, not a lot of people know about this but if you work in a low-income school it'll be a huge part sign a teacher staff member Elias to help with this with advocacy so there that's where that will be then building family strengths. Let's flip over here. Let's see. So building family strengths. Uh, family strengths. Uh, all families have strengths. There are fun. fun there. These are their funds of knowledge, and we already looked at that. What that is. Those cultural things that they they pass on from generation to generation. They express them in a variety of ways. But the approach that schools agencies take when working with families to focus on strength uh, eliminate these. Okay, so here are some things to uh, increase those that, and I, I'm going to give you this also. Here's number nine, is you're going to 
uh, talk about uh, briefly about each of these like for example communication uh, families involves clear direct channels families develop complicated ways of communicating strong families of this appreciation commitment wellness uh, belief that family members trust uh, others to learn and give they receive love and then time to get the ability to deal with stress conflict and crisis uh, what does that mean in the school? Developing takes time and energy. And it's unfortunate because a lot of our schools, our middle class schools, uh, these things take care of themselves. But if you work with families that, uh, that are English language needs or, or some kind of a unique need, these become huge, uh, huge players. So let's go uh, to this as parents as volunteers. And again, this is where I'm going to uh, start clipping things for you to put on your website. And I hope to see them all there for you uh, under that uh, Parent Advised Volunteers link. And that's this one right here. So you link up parents. And I've put up several things already that come here. But also here, I'm going to start clipping here. So who should you ask? Uh, all teachers can benefit from the service of volunteers, but they should first determine the extent to which they are ready to use assistance. And I can remember that issue too, if somebody wants to help, but you have to be organized. And that's why I urge you to work with other teachers to figure this out and work with the leaders in your school to come up with a system. Uh, and so um, I'm going to say that is this, uh, and this is number 10. And you're going to uh, briefly address uh, each of these based on what this says here in the textbook. So recruitment is volunteers by individual teachers. Uh, some implement their own volunteer programs and others use a school system. And then an invitation that works is like this. Does it sound enjoyable? And so this is what I'd like you to put under that, is that right there uh, under invitations that work here so that you have that does this does the event sound enjoyable is there something in it for parents are the parents children involved in the program and does the program all have alternate times for attendance and what does that mean well we haven't really talked about that here but uh one of the things in our school days uh, especially our low-income uh schools uh, that uh, alternate times comes because a lot of families aren't available. A lot of this uh, will come from single parents or uh, are unique uh, structured families. And uh, parents uh, may not uh, be available to come during the school day. Uh, I got a real dose of this teaching a low-income school that, uh, of course, I wanted to schedule IEP meetings during the school day. And I was that a huge burden for some families to do it before five o'clock was. So uh, somewhat regularly, I would say to them, uh, you know, uh, can, should we do it after five o'clock? And the issue was nobody else wanted to do it. I needed a, a regular ed teacher. I needed an administrator. They didn't want to be this. Uh, they didn't want to do this uh, in the evenings. Uh, and so uh, remember that through this whole thing, is this what what about time for them uh we, we we eliminate that and then of course you can get a little bit that too in our middle class families were uh, uh not uncommon for both families uh, in yesteryear my mom was home every day and uh, for the most part was unavailable to come to school because of responsibility at home and on the farm but uh in, in our life and a lot of your lives uh, both family both parents working what is this? And so this is really set up for one parent being at home or being available. And uh, I had some more flexibility in my uh, career than a lot of others. So I was able to do more of this than than a lot of the other families. But we had some families uh, and, and the Christian school our kids went to a lot of the families had a stay at home parent. And I want to say stay at home mom, but uh, political correctness, you're not supposed to say that. So I say a stay at home parent. Uh, to do that, uh, even though it really was all mom. And disproportionately so, there were uh, families uh, that uh, that uh, had a stay-at-home parent, in them, but they were all moms. There weren't any dads except me. I would often be at things with uh, things in just because I had flexibility. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these. And what about performance? 
you know, what, what does that do? These field trips, uh, use a field trip to talk with parents volunteering in the classroom because you always need help supervising, especially when they're younger. And then these, the want ads. And again, I'm going to clip this. Actually, I'm going to download this for you to upload again. You may not use this at all, but it'll be a reminder of what you can do. And you would, obviously, you wouldn't when I want to add refers to newspapers, but you may use this on your website uh, in a Google form or in an email in a Google form where you would put some of this up. You would put information and say, hey, which of these things work for you to help with? And you create those Google Forms and send them out. Or every time, for example, you're going to uh, do something, I need help with building something here or help with computer, uh, you know, you send a Google Form for people to sign up. Now, let's deal with this yucky part that I get all the time. Oh, well, what if all the parents don't have the internet? Well, that could be. And we've beat kids down with that. But here's the thing. The majority of families do. And should we be dysfunctional in our classroom and create dysfunctional uh, families because the ones that do have it, that are used to technology, and believe me, in our family, it almost was the only way. What killed us was things coming home in papers in their bags. Yeah, you heard it. The bag was so full of papers that this... Uh, thing that was sent home to communicate to families number one we may or may not see it and two we may or may not be able to find it back when we're ready to deal with it so here's what my point is my kids are much older now but even when younger i constantly constantly worked with site council on communicating digitally and that includes uh, emails, uh, now text messages. You know, there's text apps that for a long time, text messages can only include 20 uh, people on it. But now there's apps that you can send text messages that handle more than that. But certainly email seems to be still be somewhat functional. But even more so, I would use websites and even social media if you're in a middle class school uh, to communicate, to get stuff out. And you are learning that. And if you don't, you want to work on that. But I'm going to give this like this uh, and put this on your, um, let's see, this is 5-7. Uh, put this on your website and give it a name so that uh, you have that. Then invitations to share. I don't think I have. Oh, I do. So put this under invitations to share back here under number 10. And that is this. Teachers still need their help. Each parent has already experienced working with children. Children be proud like that. So I'm going to clip this, even though it doesn't have a place here. Um, I'm going to clip this because I want you to have this. I need to shrink this a little so you have this. I'm going to say, what are some of these uh, things you can do in school? And I've, I've, in the past, students have told me how helpful that is. Is here, parents, here are um, tasks that you can do. So let's go ahead and clip this and say, teaching tasks uh, for school. So I'm going to give you that. And that goes on your website also, so you remind, remember it. And really, a, a great list. And then this one, I'm going to come back up here a little bit and say, what about the teaching tasks in school? And let's uh, let's grab that. And you put that in, uh, it jumps here, teaching, tasks, school. And then this one here will be helpful for you also. And I please put these all on yours. Uh, Non-teaching tasks. That isn't what I wanted. I want that one.
non teaching pass and I'll put that on the website for you to put in yours and this one what contributions from home can you make and so let's go ahead and clip that and again uh, a reminder And who this may suit is uh, people that can't come during the day. Okay. Make games, care for another volunteer's children, write newsletters, coordinate volunteers. So those are contributions you may do from home. And then um, how about this? Just a little thing that says, please share with school or center. And, and again, I don't want you to use this. I want this to be a reminder to you what you can create because you're not going to use paper ones. You're going to use digital ones. You, the only time you're going to use paper ones if parents directly tell you that they can't, you, they don't have access to technology. And even now, there's government phones and stuff. They can get text messages. And the other thing is, most schools now will provide you with an email list. For the families of the kids in your class, no matter what grade. That's almost automatic. And the office will have identified who does not communicate that way. So you, uh, again, I would use this on a website and technologically, uh, you know, get this out. So I'm going to save this also. What's the name of this? Figure 5.8. 5.8. Okay. And when I say put them on your website so that you can see them, not so they're a link or, or, or tucked down, open them up so you can, can go buy them. And then management techniques like schedules, volunteer sheets, um, increasing volunteer usage, volunteer training. Uh, I maybe should put some of these on here yet. Oh, here they are. Um, this is number 11. And again, you address each of these, what they have to do with that. And I've got a few more things I want to clip for you. Not this. I would like this. Teacher responsibilities to volunteer. I want you to have this. So I, instead of this up here, I'm going to call this figure 5-9. Because I want this on your website. Teachers enlist the help of volunteers, make volunteers feel welcome, smile and reassure them, explain class rules and regulations, because we don't train you very well how to work with families. So I'm going to say this is figure 5-9. And again, I don't expect you to use this. I expect this to be an awareness for you uh, in the future. So you're going to put that on your website. And this one, the volunteer's responsibility to the teacher. And so you may need to share that with them of here. This is what I'm asking you to, re to agree to. Be dependable and punctual. Keep bridge voyage information concerning the children. Things you would expect. And so I'm going to call this 510, even though it's not. But I want this on your website. So I'm going to come back here and say that big 5.9 5.10 on website so you have that okay and recruitment by schools um, I don't know if I have that here let me uh, clip this also uh, and I'm just going to call it recruitment and you uh, let's see, let's, uh, instead of putting this on your website, let's, let's put this in your notes. And we're just going to call it recruitment. Okay. And we're going to put that right here. Uh, And we'll, we'll include that with 11, but just put that re include recruitment clip right there. 
Okay. So there you have it, um, like I say, and I think it's one of the more helpful ones. Uh, you'll get better at this. You'll be challenged when you first start teaching. Look at this when you're student teaching. Uh, what are your teachers doing now uh, in this respect? And, uh, uh, you know, how can you uh, use parents? And I say, when I was doing it, I loved it. It takes time. Be considerate of, you know, people that work uh, full-time, um, but uh, you'll do great on this.